Depression is a word you're probably familiar with. It gets thrown around too casually in conversations these days. Something which is sad about upsetting is often described as depressing. But what actually is clinical depression? In this documentary we aim to find out what is clinical depression, how people deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis, and what other ways we can help deal with it. Hi, I'm, so I'm Johnny and I'm 20. I've been diagnosed with depression well, first of all, I was diagnosed with mild depression in January 2011 and I've been diagnosed with actual depression, like clinical depression, for about two months now. Um, I felt quite low for about six to seven months before I sought medical help. Um, depression makes me feel really low. Um, it just makes me feel like I have no motivation to do anything that I um, just want to just sit and do nothing all the time I just feel it makes me feel like I'm really lazy when it's just the way I feel and there's not really anything I can do to deal with it before I had depression I always wanted to do like my coursework and get it done and sort it and out of the way but ever since I've had depression I've always felt like I don't want to do that anymore. Um, it makes me feel really low and hate myself and it's just horrible when I have my low moods. Um, on a day to day basis I cope with my depression by... I, I'm not really sure how I'd cope with it on a day to day basis, I haven't really been coping to be honest. Um, I try to talk to people but I'm not very good at that, I don't like putting my feelings out there so I don't like making myself feel vulnerable. Um, I play a lot of Xbox and listen to a lot of music to try and like get my emotions out that way but it sometimes doesn't work and I just end up feeling worse. Um, I'm on Metrazepan which is one of the forms of medication it they prescribed um, under antidepressants. I, I know a few of them. There's metrazepam, citalopram, and a couple of others. I think um, I account attended some counselling, um, but it wasn't the time schedule. My time schedule didn't really fit in with it, so I had to stop it. Um, but I am on the shortlist to do um, some CBT, which stands for cognitive behaviour therapy. I think. I'm on the I'm on the waiting list to do that in the summer when I'm back at home. Um, I think all like the medication I think is it it wasn't it didn't feel like it was working at first, but it seems to have like leveled me out kind of a bit more. I don't feel get as low mood as I used to, and the counselling did help when I had it, but. As I said, it didn't really work. We've been speaking to some people who have been diagnosed with depression as well as medical professionals to get their opinions. Okay, my, my name is Katja Fisher and I'm one of the student counsellors at Bedford College. My name is Vicky Hornet, I'm a nurse practitioner working for one of the doctor's surgeries here in Bedford. And my job is basically based here at the university looking after the health needs of the students. Depression is a problem that basically impacts on everybody's day-to-day -day life, meaning that they're unable to perform sort of even the basic tasks, and that can range from sort of very mild depression where it's a bit of an effort to do things to severe depression where it's just an impossibility to do things. But um, depression is an illness, and um, I've just checked there is um, a code for it, which I can't remember, but it's on the DSM, which is a... Um, a, um, a, st um, a guide, but it's basically a handbook where all the uh, mental disorders are listed, and I think it's within the four states, so it's a mental health disorder, an illness. Um, there are many different symptoms, and I guess it's not, you know, easy to kind of, um, you know, that's why it quite often gets misdiagnosed. Um, I guess one of the main ones would be 
low mood, very low mood. Um, and I think it's it's more if you kind of look at the person and the changes within the person. So it could be, you know, that um, they are excessively tired or not able to sleep at all, um, that they would, you know, suddenly lo lose appetite or maybe eat, you know, completely different or eat, you know, eat a lot. Um, they, um, you know, sadness, feeling of extreme sadness, crying without, um, you know, what they perceive no reason, but also over a certain period of time. Um, I guess that would be some of the, but most of the time people would actually notice, you know, a change in themselves. Diagnosis is very much about multiple sort of load of symptoms. It's basically diagnosed from talking to the person, getting an idea of what difficulties they're having, how long they've been having them for, whether there's anything in particular that has triggered those difficulties, if there's anything from their past. During that time when you're talking to them, it's also about body language, sort of how they're reacting to you, whether or not they're able to make eye contact, whether or not they're able to sort of talk quite openly and fluently or whether it's very much a monotone sort of conversation where it's very much difficult to actually get information from them. There's a couple of questionnaires that are used just to get an idea of the severity of the depression and sort of it's a combination of all those things basically. Um, again, I think there's many different reasons and quite often it's a kind of, um, you know, when several things happen probably on top of each other, um, there is evidence that, this, um, that it might be, you know, um, running in families, but again, that could also be different because it doesn't have to be necessarily genetically, it could be that, you know, children see, live with parents who are depressed and see that as, as a way of coping and kind of take that on. Um, it could be um, obviously things like um, severe trauma in childhood, ranging from different types of abuse um, to bullying, which is carries quite a, a significant. Um, and then it can be things happening, you know, in the kind of immediate, um, you know, in the kind of here and now, um, bereavement, um, you know, relationship problems, splitting up, um, you know, yeah, stress can be one of, you know, one of the reasons. So there's many different kind of triggers, really. Numerous things. So or for a lot of people, we have no idea why they've become depressed. It's just a medical condition that hasn't been caused or triggered by anything. Other people, it's significant life events, so massive trauma, so sort of rape, accidents, or sudden loss of sort of relative, anything like that can trigger it. And just from life experience, if they've, like here at the university, they've moved away from home and all of a sudden they're having to live on their own, look after themselves, they haven't got the family support. If there's problems with flatmates and things like that, that can make them difficult. And just the day-to-day -day sort of difficulties they have eventually sort of impacts on their mood and their ability just to get on with things. So how would you help someone with depression? Um, again, I think it, it probably depends also kind of which age group we're looking at. But if we're looking at you know young people, um, I personally think um, you know counselling or you know psychotherapeutic kind of intervention, different type of talking therapy would probably, in my opinion, be the, the best way forward, um, rather than medicating immediately, especially with young people. So, um, yeah, so counselling is definitely something which I find, um, you know, I've seen people who pulled back that it has helped them. Depending on the severity of the diagnosis, there's two basic ways that we go. One is obviously with medication, so starting them on antidepressants. The other one is with counselling, because very often if it's an underlying problem, then being able to talk to somebody about it means that they can start accepting the problems and working ways of coping with those difficulties. The choice that we make very much depends on the severity of the problem. 
and if it's only fairly mild depression which poses no significant risk to themselves or to other people first line would generally be to refer them for counselling just so that by having somebody to talk to they can hopefully get sort, sort out the problems in more severe sort of cases then the next thing would be to prescribe uh, some form of antidepressants for them again taking into account the risk they are to themselves or to other people any other symptoms they've got with it as well very often often you get anxiety with depression so that basically decides which antidepressant you're going to put them on however we never ever just use antidepressants alone if people are put onto antidepressants they have to undergo some form of therapy as well whether it's counseling cognitive behavioral therapy because unfortunately medication on its own isn't going to take away the problem that is the underlying sort of cause of the depression they are all very much of a muchness you've basically got three main types the most commonly used ones or especially in this age group is something called the serotonin reuptake inhibitor which is a way of stopping the chemical serotonin being reabsorbed in sort of the nerve cells of the brain so that sort of it works a lot better and basically what that does is just to help sort of even out the mood it's not going to make a miraculous sort of impression it's not going to make a big difference you're not going to take one tablet and all of a sudden everything's absolutely fine but just by helping to lift those levels it just helps to even the mood out some of them with the that have got anxiety as well then there are other antidepressants the same sort of group basically but with that one, it actually helps to reduce the levels of anxiety as well and very often can be used on its own to treat anxiety, even if there's no evidence of any depression. Do you think it's ever possible to fully recover from depression? Um, again, I think it's kind of what people report back. I mean, th there is people who suffer from bouts of depression throughout their lives but then it might be that the periods in between get longer periods when they're not feeling depressed it might be that then something happens many years later and it kind of takes them back to a place um, so I, I don't know whether you could say they have fully recovered maybe not um, but on the other hand um, it's not something where you know you kind of um, it, it, it's not something where you say you, you, if once you have it, you have to, you know, it, it's going to stay like that and it's never ever going to get better, if, if, if you see what I mean. Yeah. So it kind of, um, I think it's, yeah, it, it, it depends, but I mean, certainly, you know, the people I've seen um, who, who would, would say, I've had depression and now I've recovered, so, yeah. That's a difficult one. It depends how severe the depression's been, I think. If you've had problems with severe depression for sort of a long period of time, then probably no. If you're somebody that's had an acute sort of episode of depression because of a life event, depending on what that life event was, then with the right care sort of and support, probably sort of, yeah, there is a fair chance that you will recover from it. I'm Sarah and I'm 19. I'm Hannah and I'm 17. I'm Hope and I'm 21. My name is Asia and I'm 20. Uh, I originally got diagnosed three years ago, but then I kind of stopped having treatment because I just felt like I didn't need it anymore. And then I got re-diagnosed about a month ago. Since I was 13. Eight years. Um, I was eight years old, so 12 years ago. Um, I was forced into therapy by my parents when I was 13. I probably felt 
like, bad, like, two years before. 11, 12. Um, probably for about a year. My mom was the main reason that I ended up getting medical help for it. Um, first time, I was probably about 13 when I kind of noticed it. I won't say I was different, but, like, things would really get to me. And it took me, like, a couple of years to actually do anything about it. Then this time, I guess it's just been ongoing from like when I stopped having my treatment. But I've just been trying to like stay strong and deal with it on my own. Helpless. How doesn't it you feel like every day you wake up wishing you didn't? Like you think of every way possible to kill yourself. Like a simple innocent object could suddenly become something that could like do some harm like you feel totally worthless and like you don't see what your purpose is in life like you just feel like you don't help anybody whatsoever and you're like a burden all the time tired drained useless um bit worthless obviously makes you feel sad <laughs> um but I uh I ended up being really suicidal at a couple of points um and yeah just really helpless and like there was no ending in sight really like it was never gonna get any better distract myself like Go for a walk, watching my favourite films and music, talking to people who will cheer me up. Um, just try and distract yourself. I do a lot of writing to kind of get things out. I have also harmed before as a way to try and cope with it. And I still do get really bad urges and I have recently like harmed quite a lot as well but I guess I just kind of like I don't know you just try to be strong and put like a big brave face on so like no one asks you if you're feeling okay um I try to surround myself with like positive people if I feel like I'm sad or whatever I like talk to like a friend about it um, I used to self-harm quite a bit, um, and I was into a lot of recreational drugs. Um, in healthy ways, I used to journal, and I would write a lot of poetry. I am now, yeah, I'm on 10 milligrams of citilopram. Yeah. I'm on Prozac. Yeah. Alexa and Lamictal. Yes. For eight years. Uh, Cymbalta. Um, I felt like it helped at first, and then as time went on, it started to fade out. I changed medications quite a few times. Um, I think it helps a little bit, like, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um... I haven't seen any difference, like, yeah, but I think if you went off them, you tell the difference between how you are with them and without it, but it's helped a little. Um, when I first got on it, it had a really bad effect on me, like, it made me really, really suicidal, like, really bad, and um, it was a lot worse than when I had, was on it before, like, before it kind of had an effect. And that's why I kind of stopped taking it and stopped like making me have to go to my doctors because I thought, yeah, it's worked, I'm better now. But this time it's like had a really negative effect. And I don't think to this point like it's actually had a positive effect on me as such. But... I've been advised to go to counselling. I did for a few weeks, but then other commitments got in the way and I kind of pushed it to the side. 
but um, I'm going to try and get back into counselling and I'm going to talk to my doctor because obviously I haven't been that honest with them about how I really am so I'm hoping like if I'm actually a boot club and be honest to them I can get a better help and stuff when I was younger but I didn't really agree with it, it didn't help no, I had like one bad experience and it kind of made me wary about it I saw like a social worker and I also saw a psychiatrist. I felt like the social worker helped, but the psychiatrist didn't um, because I felt like the psychiatrist was just looking for an excuse to give me medication. Whereas this, the social worker actually helped talk through things and gave me ways to cope better, cope with it better. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's nice to have someone that's like not biased listen to what I have to say. Um, well, I mean, everybody gets sad, right? So sometimes you just get bouts of it where you just, you feel depressed. But as for, like, chronically, um, I think I've probably been free of that for, like, four years. I don't know. Yeah. Do you feel like you're going to get better 